So um, hi and welcome to our session this afternoon on getting started with Apple Teacher. Um, over the next hour, we're going to take a look at what the Apple Teacher Learning Centre is and how you can utilise um, a lot of the skills that you're going to learn, um, both in your own kind of classroom practice, but also how you can come up with ideas for utilising some of those things in the classroom with your students as well. Um, a bit of an introduction to who I am and, and what the, the Apple Regional Training Centre is. My name is Matt Pullen. I am a senior lecturer at the University of South Wales. Um, I am an Apple Distinguished Educator, um, class of 2013, and also an, an Apple Professional Learning Specialist uh, supporting uh, educators and schools in their use of technology. Um, but like I said, this session is really just getting started with Apple Teacher and how you can use it to uh, support you in the classroom. Um, throughout the session, we're going to be using a, a range of apps, really, but predominantly we're going to be using notes. We'll take a look at voice memos. We, we'll probably hint on reminders. But really, today's session is, is all about the apps that come built into your device that some people may not even use because... The App Store has hundreds of thousands of other apps that, that are fantastic and, and really, really uh, make having an iPad a, a really powerful tool. But in doing that, you almost miss some of the, the really, really fantastic apps that come without the need for Wi-Fi most of the time um, and without uh, any setup. They're, they're on your device and ready to go. So we're definitely going to be looking at that in the session. So this is, uh, this is our agenda, very brief agenda, um, introduction to the Apple Teacher Learning Centre, which I'm going to explore in a second. I'm going to put um, a link in the chat window. So if you haven't used Zoom before, just to let you know that there is um, a, uh, a chat window that you can go into. Please do, if you have any questions at any point, um, ask me any questions. I'm, I'm trying to keep an eye on it um, whilst I run the session. Um, and it'd be great uh, that I can personally respond to any of your questions. Now, obviously, if you're watching this on replay, uh, that feature is not going to be part of the session, unfortunately, uh, but maybe you'll pick up the, the question that you might have through someone else. So in that chat window, I have just pasted um, a link to the Apple Teacher Learning Center, um, because this is what we're going to start to talk about today. Now, if you've never heard of Apple Teacher before, Apple Teacher is a place to go for some um, very personalized teaching-based professional development ideas around the role of iPad and Mac in the classroom. And you'll see from the screenshot that as well as the Apple Teacher badges that we're going to talk about throughout the predominance of this session, there are also some additional things in there looking at um, ideas for the classroom, specifically creative ideas, also things about augmented reality, things about coding. So there's an awful lot of information in there um, that you can find. If I jump into Apple Teacher now, and I, I kind of urge everybody at this point to, to do the same thing. If you have an Apple ID, it's going to let you just sign straight in. If you haven't, um, then uh, obviously having this as a video recording is going to help you set yourselves up with your Apple ID um, and, and then obviously have access to all of the, the features that we're going to explore now. So this is the Apple Teacher Learning Center. Like I said, within this, there, there's a whole load of information. And, and over the next few uh, courses that we put on, we're going to go through these skills for iPad. If I click into the skills for iPad, you'll see that there's uh, you know, iPad specific skills, which is the focus of today's session. But then also skills are based around the apps that, again, are part of Apple's ecosystem in the classroom and beyond. Pages, Keynote Numbers, iMovie, and GarageBand. So the, the whole Apple Teach program is a self-guided um, support mechanism that this workshop is going to help guide people through to just give you a few more ideas about how to use that in your classroom. As well as that within Apple Teacher, uh, and sometimes this gets uh, missed out, is that there are lots and lots of other things that come as part of the Apple Teacher Learning Center. So it's always great to drop back into at any point. For example, this 30 creative activity for kids, um, it says more because there was a, an original set of 30 activities um, back in, I think it was April, May time. Um, and this is even more activities that you can do. And you'll see lots and lots of different ways that you can use learning in your classroom. So just some examples here of what you can do around podcasting, what you can do around use of photos to develop an understanding of words. Um, this is a fab one, a day in the life 
where you get to draw on top of pictures. So there's loads and loads of ideas, again, specifically there to provide you with a thought process of what you could do in your own classrooms um, and, and how you could personalize some of these activities to suit the needs of your students. So what I'm going to ask um, everybody to do, and again, if you can get into it now, fantastic. If you can't, please do watch the video back and just go through the steps, is we are going to go into the Learn the Skills for iPad. You'll see that there's all of these skills here that, again, we're going to go through as part of the workshop. And when we've completed all of the skills, at the very end, there is an icon with the star, which gives you the opportunity to earn your badge. And at the end of each one of these sessions, we should have covered off all of the skills so that you have an understanding of how they work and you'll be able to take your badge. When you click on this, it loads up the page that allows you to take your test. Um, I've already done mine. So at the bottom of the screen, it should hopefully say you've already earned this badge. There we go. But on your screen, it will give you the opportunity to take the test. Um, and it's a very, very simple uh, test. It's a, it's a five question activity, which which isn't about the testing as such. It really is about getting you to think about the process. So it's, it gives you a, an understanding of an activity that you might want to do, and it gets you to, to focus on, on the process that got you to that point. Um, and it will make more sense, obviously, once we've gone through the focus of today's session. So in saying that, let's jump back to the presentation. And the next thing I just wanted to introduce, and again, I'm going to post a link in the chat window to this, is I created this book which goes alongside the training sessions. Um, and in the book, it, it gives you additional ideas on how you can utilize Apple Teacher in your classroom. Um, I've created some videos that support as well as some activities that you might want to try yourself. So if I find uh, this book now, this is the book. Um, and you'll see that it goes through this getting started with Apple Teacher. So again, if you haven't been able to set up your account at this point, um, there is a video here which talks you through the whole process, tells you wh where to go to, to access the information. It also comes with this downloadable journal that you can use. And again, what would be great is if anybody um, on this call now benefits from doing this, feel free to use this with your colleagues or peers um, or even your own students in the classroom as a way for them to develop their skills. So when you download that journal, it's going to give you access to this, which again, feel free to use on the back of this session. And really what I've done is created a guide which will go through with some ideas about what you can do um, with some of the skills. So there's an activity here. This is about creating your own Memoji laptop, which is this um, stickered laptop on your, uh, on your device. And it gets you to, to create something like this for yourself and then ask you to kind of uh, have a go at those challenges and then share some of those ideas back and when you've completed them um, in a fun way there's a little sticker that you can choose so let's say i wanted to utilize this black sticker here i'm going to take that sticker and i'm going to place it on my own emoji laptop here like i've already done here to just decorate my sticker just as a bit of a prompt as you go through and you'll notice that there are six stickers for each of the different badges that you can do that you can end up decorating um, on your uh, on your own laptop well your Mimoji laptop because I know people get quite precious about putting stickers on their actual laptops so hopefully that makes sense again feel free to shout out um, if you want any more detail mm -hmm. but the link is there if you just want to to download that um, so that you can have a go in your own so let's get uh, let's get into what we're going to do today. Like I said, we're going to be looking at how to use iPad in the classroom. And these are the things that we want to go through. So we're going to introduce the Notes app, a, a fantastic tool, which often gets overlooked on the iPad, um, but really can support you in lots of things in the classroom, from keeping notes to actually organizing and planning lessons. We'll have a look at how we can change your home screen and fine tune the control center on your device to make it very personal to you. We'll take a look at screen recording and screenshots to help you document ideas and, and create resources for your learners. We'll take a look at Siri and hopefully um, they, she plays up well for me today. Um, always a, a, a terror when you're doing live demonstrations. Um, but we'll take a look at Siri and how you can use Siri to just support your workflow as an educator. Take a look at Safari and then hopefully there'll be some time at the end to take a look at how we can utilize voice memos in the classroom just for a little bit of teacher efficiency. 
So we're saying that, and we're not quite on the test yet. I'm going to start off by going into Notes on my device. Now, Notes is this app here with the, the yellow bar at the top and the white underneath. And I'm going to get started by creating a new note. So you'll notice over on the side here, there's an, a square with a pen facing into it. That's going to create a new note for me. So again, if you've got an iPad to hand, please feel free to, to follow along and we'll, we'll go through all of these different stages together um, so you can see how to use the different things. So what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to put this in the context of planning a lesson. So let's imagine that we are teaching about the water cycle. And I know I need to kind of get some thoughts together of what I want my lesson to look like. And I'm going to try and use notes to collate all of that into one place. So let's start by thinking, like, what do I currently know about the water cycle? Well, you all have seen already, I've started to put together a very, very basic sketch of the water cycle, because what I can do quite easily within notes is utilize the drawing tools, which is this icon here, the pen nib inside a circle, to allow me to just draw some notes directly onto the page. Now, like I said, I'm using water cycle as my example. I could have chosen any number of topics. So if you want to just draw directly onto your screen, feel free. But I'm going to use this as a water cycle um, idea. So let's take this notion of what do I know about the water cycle? Well, I know it involves um, clouds. This is the point where I have to declare I'm not an artist. And we know that rain is formed. And we know that that rain falls on to hills. And eventually that's going to flow down to the sea. So how does it get there? Well, it would form into tiny rivers at first, streams, sorry, streams and then rivers, um, and they would lead out to the sea. And then what we also might have is the sun coming out. And what the sun does is it causes uh, the heat to evaporate some of that water, which eventually forms into tiny droplets and makes new clouds. And that whole circle starts again. So a very, very crude idea of, of what the water cycle is. But just really, just in my own head, this is what I'm going to be teaching to the students and just clarifying do I fully understand that? Uh, and also thinking about how this can be used in the classroom. This is a great way for students to just quickly document their thought process. So once we've created that simple drawing, I've got this idea. Let's just have a look at the drawing tools on the iPad. So along the top bar here, um, we have a whole set of drawing tools, which are really great within Notes to just help us do things like this, sketch ideas, but also, you know, it can be for, for writing information. Um, it could be that I'm going to just label these things. So we've got our streams and we've got our rivers. We've got evaporation, etc. And we can start to use all of these tools really, really easily to just get that information down in a very visual way. Now, again, like I said, this, this could be a note that I'm using beforehand, but equally, if I just turn this full screen by tapping on the expanding arrows here, this actually just becomes a very, very useful whiteboard for sharing to my students. And in the same way as I'm connected to the computer screen now to be able to share it with you all, I could share this to the screen at the front of the class to do exactly the same thing. So rather than just have it as a whiteboard and use a pen, I'm just going to use it digitally instead, get the same outcome. But actually what we'll see in a couple of steps is that there are some additional outcomes to doing it in this way. Just to go through those drawing tools, just so everyone can see, um, I've been using the pen tool. Uh, this one here that's currently green is a highlighter tool. So if I tap on this, you'll see that it just is going to give me that kind of highlighter effect. Maybe good for colouring things in, etc. Obviously for highlighting things. Uh, a pencil tool, which is just a, a thinner, sort of scratchier feel to it. You're obviously your eraser to allow you to delete things out. A copy and paste tool or clip tool. So if I wanted to move this shape, I can move it around just by selecting it. Equally, any of those shapes on the screen. And then something which is really handy, maybe not so much for, for the activity that I'm doing at the moment, but for other activities, having a ruler where it will also allow you to measure the angles as well as draw straight lines. So if I go back to the pen, 
and draw that line across the page, you'll see that it's going to draw that nice straight line for me as well. So really, really useful kind of range of tools in there. And then something which um, is recent in the, the latest update, so in iPad OS 14, is the Scribble tool. So the pen with the A on it. This tool allows you to actually write directly on in this handwriting recognition. So if I want to write in here that this is the water cycle, it will pick up my writing and turn that into text down here. So you can see that on your screen as well. So really, really, you know, range of ways for you to add information into your, your drawing. And again, for students to be able to use this in a way that works for them, it could be through drawings, could be through, through writing things, etc. You'll also have noticed that when I was drawing the sun over here, when I drew that, it made it into a perfect circle for me because another one of the tools within Scribble is that if you draw shapes and hold the pen on the paper, it, it will actually turn it into a shape for you. So again, just a really, really simple way to be able to turn things into something which is a little bit more obvious um, for people to look at. So that's what we've looked at there. So drawing, really, really good start to, to our plan. And I've got that, that nice uh, outline of, of the water cycle that I might share with the students to give them an understanding. And again, I'm going to show something else um, afterwards as well. Now, the next thing that we can do in notes, which is really great, is start to structure my lesson. So again, we're just going to take a look at lots of the tools that we've got within our notes. And I'm going to go to this one here, which is the tick within the circle. I'm going to tap on the tick and you'll see that it gives me this uh, circle, which is now um, something that I can click to say it's been completed. So within my lesson, I'm going to start with an introduction. I know I need to plan the introduction. I then need kind of a main body of work or an activity. Uh, and then want something, something creative on a creative element in my work. Um, and then obviously I need to do some, some form of plenary at the end of the session. So I'm just going to use this now as a planning activity because what's great with this aspect is as I complete those tasks, I can now tick them off to say they've been done. So again, just from a teacher organization point of view, being able to tick those activities to say, yep, I've completed that means it's going to help you stay organized in the work that you're creating as well. So that is the tick box activity here. And the next thing we want to do is we want to do some, some research around what I want to add into my lesson. Uh, and to do that, what's great is to use the camera. So it could be that there's pre-existing content that you might have on your device, or you might want to take new content and add it in. Um, for example, uh, last week when I was uh, sort of in the house, because everyone is kind of in the house all the time at the moment, we had a, a huge downpour of rain. And, and like any good teacher, you see something happening and it doesn't matter whether you're actually teaching it or not, you think I can grab that because that might come in handy for when I'm teaching something down the line. Um, so I did, um, and I captured a fantastic video of the rain falling pretty heavily in the back garden. So I'm gonna go to my photos, go to albums, tap add, and I think this video is gonna be really useful in my lesson. So I'm gonna put it in as part of my planning here. And if I just, oops, wrong button. If I just play that video. So this is this is the rain falling and it was in slow motion. So I thought I'd capture it in slow, but I filmed it in slow motion, sorry. Um, I thought it'd be quite useful to show to students about, you know, what's happening and, and the patterns it makes on the floor. And, you know, again, it's just one of those things that you, um, you capture because you think as a teacher that might come in handy for something. And you know, what? I actually found another video. So I'm going to go back in and choose uh, one of the other videos that I captured, which was this one here, because just after it started raining, it then started hailing. And again, really, really useful as a video to show to students, like what, what is the same process? So we're talking about the water cycle, but here we've got something else falling from the sky. And what is this? And, and you know, again, it's that inquiry model of learning. But again, I can add this to my note. I might not use it, but it's there as a resource that I might use um, down the line. So that's a really, really useful way of capturing and collating resources. Back in the camera, there's a couple of other things that I can do. I can also take a live photo or video, which so, you know, if, if you're out and about and you, you suddenly capture something, you could add it in here. But something else that's really useful is the ability to scan documents as well. 
So I'm going to tap on scan documents and I'm just going to check the camera. And I've got this ready prepared already. It's uh, just a map of the UK. Um, I think this might be quite useful in my teaching and I'll show you why in a second. So I'm just going to take an image of that. Now that's going to scan the image in. So it lets me choose, you know, the, the aspects I want of that image. And when I tap keep scan, it's going to flatten it out. It's going to sort of erase some of the, the um, shine that you might have. If it was taking a photo, you'll see that it's kind of softened out that picture. And if I tap on the picture, I have some of those same tools as I used before. So if I tap on the screen, I have those drawing tools back. And I think actually I'm going to use this to highlight areas of the UK where it rains a lot. Now, for those of you that are in the UK, um, it rains a lot here in Wales. So I can just use the pens to, to mark up. It rains quite a lot in Scotland. Uh, it rains quite a lot in Ireland. Um, and it rains quite a lot in the rest of the country as well over in England. So there we go. The only place it tends to not rain seems to be London for some reason. We'll see on the weather forecast, it seems to be nice in London. Oh, and in the southwest down here where the beaches are. The rest of the, rest of the country seems to rain all the time. Um, so again, you can use this, you know, I'm sort of being a little bit, uh, you know, facetious about drawing on this and, and looking at where it rains all the time. It could be a photo of a hillside. It could be a photo um, of the mountains if you're, if you're near mountains. It could be a, a photo of streams or rivers. But what you're doing is kind of adding to that resource using those markup tools to just add that little bit of extra detail to some of the things that you're doing. So hopefully you're sat there now listening to this thinking, oh, that would be really handy in X, Y, or Z lesson where I could do something very, very similar by just scanning and scanning a document and adding some additional content over the top of it. So that's how to scan those documents. Now, let's imagine that this is not just me teaching this lesson. I share this class with someone else or there's another class which is going to be doing a similar thing. And these are my notes. And I think those videos would be really, really useful. Um, if I tap on the three dots at the top, what I can do here is I can share this note um, with a colleague. Um, I can also send a copy of the note, which means they wouldn't have access to the same one. So if I make any edits, there's one update. But if I share the note, then their version will update. And it's pretty simple to do as long as they've got um, access to an Apple ID as well. I can just share this through many different means. So whether you're using Teams or Shobi or Classroom, or even just as a text message um, or an email, I can send this note to someone. And as long as they've got notes on their device, they would have access to this note as a shared document, which then means that if I'm collaborating on this lesson plan with someone else, they can add in their content as well. And we can start to build this really, really rich resource. And again, we're talking about this from a lesson plan point of view. The same could be done for your students um, in them creating something collaboratively with each other. So that's notes. That's There's an awful lot in there. Um, and what I really just wanted to introduce was the range of tools that sit within that, from drawing to adding photos to um, drawing over photos um, to, to all of the different things that you can do with it. So I'm going to pause for a second um, in case anyone wants to ask any questions before I just move on to the next uh, tool that we can look at. Okay, fab. That's fine if people want to stay, um, stay silent. Um, again, the video is there, so if you need to go back over any of those things at any point, then feel free. So the next thing we want to look at then is your home screen on your device. Now, from a teacher point of view, something about the home screen makes this um, a lot more efficient when you're trying to find things. You'll notice on my home screen, um, I've used a different background here, which has allowed me to kind of segregate the apps. So on the right hand side in this bigger panel, which I've created, uh, are apps that I tend to use quite a lot. Um, and over here in folders, I've placed apps based on what type of app they are. And I'm going to show you how to do um, some of these elements um, in a second. But the reason for doing that is because as a teacher, as an educator, just having quick access to those apps is going to just save you such an amount of time in the classroom. So how do we put that together? So your device is going to look different to mine. Everybody's device um, tends to look very personal. So let's have a look at what we can do. Now, let's imagine that these apps here, uh, the Socrative um, and the Socrative student app, I actually want to put in a folder. 
So to do that, I tap and hold on the app until I can move it freely, and then drag it to the side, hover it over another app, and it creates the folder. Let go, and it adds those two apps to the same folder. And then I can rename that folder. And these are quiz apps. And then that's gonna add that to my home screen as a folder. So just creating something which has a connection in those folders. And you'll see I've done that with, with lots of other ones. These are all to do with virtual reality and augmented reality. I've got my drawing apps, I've got my G Suite apps, um, general education ones, video call apps, which I didn't used to have very many of these, but since March time, seem to have an awful lot of video call apps. Um, but you'll see you can start to create apps which work well for you. And that process again, just a tap and hold, drag it around and then move it to pair it with another app that you want to put it into. And if you don't want it in there, just drag it out of the folder and then drop it back onto your screen. So again, have a play, have a go, see what works for you in terms of your um, app layout and, and how you want things on your device. The next thing to highlight whilst they're all jiggling around on the screen is along the bottom of the screen, you also have this dock bar. The apps to the left-hand side of this line are apps that I want viewable at all times. So they tend to be your very, very common apps um, that you probably want access to all the time. And you'll see that if I slide through my screens, those apps stay along the bottom. So it doesn't matter where I am on my iPad at any point, I have access to those apps on the screen. These three apps are the recently opened apps. So these change depending on the apps that you've had open most recently. So obviously we've been working in notes. Um, I've opened books recently to show you the book um, and I was working in photos as well. Now, if I start to open other applications now, you'll notice that those apps down the bottom will start to change, probably not with Keynote because that's already down along the bar. So again, these three, you can't change. They are just your most recently used. And, but these ones you can personalize to ones that you use all the time. Now, from a teacher point of view, they're probably gonna be your productivity apps, such as the Mail um, and Safari, as well as like a calendar app. Um, and then I tend to use Keynote and Pages and Numbers quite a lot in my delivery. So therefore, I kind of want access to them um, really, really quickly. So again, that's just personalizing the home screen. Now, something else that you can do as well to, to do with personalizing um, your device is in the top right hand corner where the battery indicator is i can also drag down from the top right corner so starting off of the screen and dragging down to reveal my control center and in my control center i have some fine control of certain things these ones here are all to do with connectivity so airplane mode um, the ability to turn on or or off airdrop um, you then also have Oops, my screen is frozen a second. Let's just jump back into that, reset it. Um, one second, I'm just going to share that one more time. Yes. Apologies, we'll get this back up in a second. It just seems to have crashed for a second. Let's have another go. Uh, okay. And we're back. Apologies for that. Okay, so back into this, like we said, we have our airplane mode. Uh, this one is for um, airdrop so if you want to be able to receive from anyone just people in your contacts or have it turned off completely uh, this is your wi-fi and this is your bluetooth this is a handy one for teachers this is do not disturb so if you turn this on um, your device isn't going to alert you of, of text messages etc so a useful one to have um, and this one is rotate the device then you've got screen brightness and volume and then all sorts of other buttons down the bottom here this is what you can completely personalize um, and we'll show you why that's really useful because on most devices you won't have this icon here and this is possibly one of the most important um, control icons on the device because this is where you can do screen recording um, so i'm going to show you how to turn these on and then obviously you can personalize that for yourself 
So I'm going to go to the settings, which is up here, which is the cogs. And over on the left hand side, you'll see that it says control center underneath general. And then over here, um, you have the option to turn this on to say access with apps. And then you have this list of things that you can have in your control center. So I, I have all of these ones and I could have all of these ones as well. Now on your device, screen recording probably isn't turned on. So screen recording will appear down here with the green plus. And if you tap it, it will appear at the top. But there might be other things that are very useful. So again, I know that it's very useful to have silent mode on my device because of being in education. I use the camera a lot. Uh, because of the, the things I do in the classroom, um, having a timer and a stopwatch is useful to have to hand. And also I teach science. So having a magnifier is very useful. Um, and like I said, screen recording is, is really vital. So again, you can control whatever you want to have on your device, depending on what works well for you. And that's, that's the nice thing about iPad is that personalization. And again, to access those things, top right corner, drag down, and it's just going to give you those uh, tools on your device. So you'll see that I've got the camera and the timer and stopwatch and magnifier, etc., all on the screen. But very much so, this one here, the screen recording, is something that's going to be very, very useful. So if I tap on this and hold it, you'll see that it gives me the option to turn my microphone on and gives me the option to start recording. Now I'm currently plugged into my device. So it's not gonna let me do this because I'm already sharing the screen. But if I tapped on start recording, it would give me the option to then start to create some very, very rich resources for my students. So let's imagine I go back into this. Now I, I mentioned before about using this as a whiteboard um, with my students. In fact, if I go to this original one that I did, if I go to the full screen, I have this whiteboard that I can use with the students. Now, something which is going to really enhance what you do is not just have that visual representation that you might have on the board, but actually, if I'd screen recorded this, what I could share back to my students is not only the video, but also my audio explanation. So the students working in my classroom or distance can have access to the video, which explains the process, and they can watch that video as many times as they want. And from a teacher point of view, I haven't actually had to do any extra work because I was going to draw the image anyway to give them some understanding. So what I've done here is as I was drawing this, I did a screen recording. And if I just jump back to my camera roll a second, because I can't do this one live, I'll just show you what that looks like. So this is the screen recording on my device. Now the sound's not going to play through, but you just have to imagine that this has also recorded my voice for some reason it, it's not going to let the sound play through um, whilst I'm sharing my screen in this sense but you'll see that everything I drew has been recorded so I end up with this although badly drawn animation showing you the whole process of the water cycle and that's something then that I can share with all of my students really really easily um, and in this case if I just go back into the video simply by tapping on the share icon at the top of the screen and then air dropping that. Now again, in video mode, when I'm sharing my screen, it doesn't show you, but um, there is a share icon on your screen that will allow you to share that video. So if I go back into notes, if I go to that video from before, if I tap, you're looking for an icon that looks like this one. And I can share that. And in the same way, I can share that via AirDrop to the students in the classroom um, or via any of the platforms that you might be using within your institution. So really, really quick and simple way of sharing that information to whoever you might need to share that information to. OK, so the next thing we're going to look at um, is similar to screen recording, but possibly a little bit easier, is the idea of just doing a screenshot. And screenshots are great because it just allows you to enhance some of the information that you might already have. Now, I don't want to go into Safari and start searching for pictures now, but I have done this um, already, but I'm going to show you how to do that later. So let's imagine I have found a picture and I've saved it to my camera roll. And I'm just going to locate that on my device very quickly. Uh, where's my folders? Okay. So here's a picture uh, that I've taken. Now, 
lots of diff different things that you could do. So let's imagine that I was on the website at the moment. I found this picture. I'm just going to take a screenshot by using the two physical buttons on the device. So the on off button at the top and the home button um, on the front of the device. I'm going to take a screenshot. You'll see that that adds a screenshot um, to my device, which then allows me to manipulate the image. And again, that seems to have not shared on the screen. One second, let's just jump back in. Uh, another another sharing issue. So um, on my screen, I now have access to the drawing tools to be able to draw over the top of that video. If I go back into uh, notes, I'm going to show it a slightly different way. So let's go into add that photo. And fundamentally, what you have is the same approach. So on your, on the screen there, you'll see that I have those drawing tools. And I can draw directly over this to add in extra information if I wanted to. So in this instance, I might actually be talking to students about um, the potential for hydroelectric power. And actually what we could do is, is build a dam across uh, the lake by here. And actually what that would do then is start to flood this area maybe a little bit more. And actually this area here would probably become more of a stream so we possibly reclaim reclaim some land but what we could do is build in some um, hydroelectric so you get the idea so i'm just using the the image really as a um, as a placeholder for me to add in extra information if i want to and again if i just tap done that's just going to add that into my note um, it's there that I can can kind of look back to and, and refer to. So again, just different ways that learners can engage in that information or a different way for me to be able to present information to those learners from the front of the class. Okay, so we've looked a lot at notes. We've looked a lot at um, how to organize your home screen to be able to do screen recordings, to add your voice to things. Let's take a look at maybe some shortcuts. Um, and I'm just very aware that I've got lots of devices around me that utilize Siri. So on your device, there are a few different ways that you can access Siri. One of them is to um, say, hey, and then the name after it, which I'm conscious of not saying at the moment because everything in the room is gonna kick off. The other way is to hold down the on off button at the top and you'll see that you get this little Siri icon appear. And then I can ask Siri some questions. So let's just do some examples for this. When is it going to rain next in Chepstow? It looks like it's raining right now. It certainly is. I did say that about uh, the, the weather in Wales, it's always raining um, and true to form it is. But again, we've got this opportunity to utilize Siri in this way to start to find out some information. So if I was doing a lesson on the water cycle, I might want to know if it's going to rain when I'm going to teach that lesson. So let's imagine I'm planning it this evening and I want to know, um, you know, what the weather's going to be like tomorrow. Is it going to rain in Chepstow tomorrow? There's a slight chance it'll rain in the morning starting at eight o'clock tomorrow. So great. So now I might be able to think about my lesson and I might want to teach my lesson when it has rained, because what I'm thinking is there's a, a, an opportunity for the students to explore the water cycle by seeing it rain, but then hopefully if it's dried up in the afternoon, they can start to explore like, well, where's the water gone? Um, we know the sun's come out, all of those things that you could have as part of an inquiry lesson. So again, I'm just gonna utilize the power of Siri to just help me understand what I'm doing. Remind me to teach my lesson first thing tomorrow morning on the water cycle and get the students to take some photos of puddles in the playground that we can then explore later in the day. Go on, Siri. I'll say it again. Remind me tomorrow to teach my lesson in the morning and get students to take photos of the puddles that have formed and then we'll explore that later in the day. Okay, added. So what you can see there is I've just been able to, because I'm in the middle of doing my planning, I've come up with an idea. I'm just going to utilize Siri 
to help me keep track of those things. So without having to type anything down, without having to go into anything, I'm just using reminders as a way to help me organize my thoughts and get that down so that I know what I'm gonna to do tomorrow. Now I could have been even more precise and had that remind me at a specific time or a specific location. So when I get to school, it would give me that information. So I'm gonna jump into reminders very quickly to show you this. This is the reminder that I've set. But if I tap on the I by here, I can actually have that remind me when I get to a specific location. So I work um, in university, so I can put that as my work location. And now what's gonna happen is when I arrive at that location, it's going to remind me that I need to teach that lesson in the morning. So again, that really, really useful way of using Siri as a personal assistant to help keep you organized in your day-to-day -day activities that you're doing. I've seen this used in lots of different ways when you're kind of interrupted in a lesson because um, the, the school secretary has come in to give you a reminder um, and teachers just, just instantly go to Siri to say, just remind me X, Y, or Z that I've just been told um, and when they need, you need to be reminded of it because there's a hundred things going on at any one time. So why not use the, the tools to support you with that? Okay, so hopefully that's a, a really, really useful one for you as well. Moving on, like I said, we're going to go into Safari and we're going to use Safari now and start to just explore some of the things that you can do. So Safari is, is Apple's web browser um, and it's got some fantastic tools in there that can really support you um, in the classroom. And we're going to use this in, in a variety of ways now. So the first thing we're going to do is go into Safari um, and I'm going to do a search for the water cycle. Uh, let's just do that. And here, you know, you'll be familiar with seeing Google's results come up on the screen. Um, and I'm just going to find this site here. What is the water cycle? Um, I think this might be a useful tool. And what you'll notice straight away on my screen is that all of the information I don't need has been stripped out of the picture. If I go back, you see this is the website. Nothing wrong with the website. It's, it's perfectly good. Uh, but you know what? There's some things on here that may be a bit of a distraction. I don't want the students to, to see games. They might disappear onto that. And, and you know what? At the moment, I don't want them to, to head off into any of these other directions. So what I do is if I turn on the, the reader view, so the two A's at the top and go to reader view, what it does is it just strips out the stuff which doesn't need to be there, which can be a distraction to the learner. So it's just basically broken down the four elements of that water cycle. It's taken the information from the website and just made it a lot easier um, to, to manage those distractions. There's a few other things that you can do in there as well. I might be, uh, you know, it might be difficult for me to read so I can make the text bigger. I can also make the text smaller if I need to. Uh, I can change the font. So again, thinking about the accessibility, is it easier for me to read in a certain way? Um, does, does some of the fonts suit me better? Again, the, back to that personalization for you. You can also change the background as well, depending on how easy it is to read. Now I permanently have my device set with the black background with the, the lighter text on the back background, um, but that's a personal choice. So again, you might have yours this way around because it works well for you in terms of the visibility, um, but that choice is there for you to use. And you can also choose whether it happens every time. So you'll notice on my screen, it automatically comes up with the reader view. I can switch that off um, or you can turn it on. So again, just some really, really useful tools uh, within Safari for doing those things. So let's let's go back uh, and let's go back to the actual page. Uh, and there might be some images in here that I think are quite useful. Um, no, not on that page. So let's do a bit of a search and find some images that I think might be useful. Something to, to add in here. Um, obviously when we're talking about copyright with, with students, something which is useful to, to know. If you tap on the tools, uh, you'll see this one here, it says usage rights. I, I always feel quite passionate about sharing this with people because um, copyright is something that we should be aware of and, and should be teaching our learners. If we tap on usage rights and change this to Creative Commons, these are pictures that have kind of permission to be used by the people. You, you tend to see lots of them under this um, Creative Commons or Commons Wikipedia or, or whatever it might be. They're, they're pictures that people have, have created and, and that you're allowed to use um, to a certain extent. So that's always useful to show. Now let's imagine that I wanted to use some of these pictures. This is a, this is a great picture because actually I think I can use this to, to um, support my students in the classroom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap 
Oh, sorry. I'm going to bring up the dock just by sliding my finger from off the screen up just to reveal the dock. And I'm going to choose notes by tapping and holding on it. And I'm going to drag it out of position. So I've got control of it. And I'm going to take it to the side of the screen so the screen splits and I'm going to let go. And now I've got that note that I was working on before in notes. And I've got Safari open on this side with those pictures. And what I really like is this picture here, because I think I can use that in my teaching. And at the moment, I'm just creating my lesson plan. So what I'm going to do is similar to how I brought notes up in split screen. I'm going to tap and hold on the image itself and drag it away. And I'm going to take it over to notes and I'm going to let go. And then hopefully in a second, that should add that image into my notes. I mean, again, for some reason today, it doesn't want to play nicely with me. There we go. So now I've got that picture on my screen. So I've got that as part of my notes. And there's a real benefit to this. Um, sometimes I've, I've seen people do this by tapping and holding on the image, bringing up the options on the screen. And then you, you find down here that you've got one that says add to photos. Um, it works perfectly well that way. But the problem with that is if I then use that picture in something like notes or I use that picture in a pages document, I've then got the photo in my photos album and I've got a copy of that picture in pages or notes or whatever it might be. In this case, I've gone directly from the source to where I want to use it which means it's actually saving a bit of space on your device because you're not replicating um, all of those things. So again, just a really, really simple way of taking information from one uh, application and moving it to another. Now, if I go back to do the same thing, let's imagine I'm now using my plan here and we'll look at this in future sessions and I want to use that image. If I say I'm going to create something in Keynote, I can have Keynote on the page here. If I just open a blank slide, I can do the reverse of that by taking the picture, dragging it to Keynote, and then utilizing over here. So I'm kind of speeding up. This is my planning side where I gather my resources, and this is my creation side where I put together my presentation. But like I said, we'll look at that in future sessions in more detail as to why you would go through that process. So that's split screen working. Really, really simple, really easy to use. Can really help speed up kind of the process in the classroom of those things that you're doing. Now, the final thing that I wanted to share with you before we take a look at uh, the test and if anyone's got any questions is voice memos. And voice memos, again, really, really simple way to save time in your classroom um, or in any of your other day-to-day -day activities that you're doing. If I tap on voice memos, you'll see that um, on the side here, I've got uh, all my recordings, all the things I want to do, and I've got a big red button in order to start recording. I'm going to put together a session on the water cycle. I need to put together some fantastic activities that the students could do. Seeing as it's going to rain tomorrow, I think it would be really good to have the students film or take some photos of the rain falling and the puddles that are caused. And then later in the day, we'll take a look at the, the area, hopefully dried up. And I'm going to pose the question to the students of where has the water gone and see what they come up with. So I'm happy with that. That's just I'm just recording my thoughts. It's just a quick and easy way of getting that information down. It's taken me 30 seconds to record that idea. I know that if I was writing that down, I'd probably still be here 10, 15 minutes later, ruminating over what that might be. But actually, do you know what? Just recording my voice. There's the idea. Happy with that. And it's going to tap done. And now I have access to that recording. I can again, this is the recording. It's just labeled it with with where I live. Um, I can change that though. So let's just say this is going to be my uh, water cycle lesson idea. And then over here again, we've got those same tools. You'll get familiar with these as, as you use Apple products, this share icon. And I'm going to share this. Um, I could I could airdrop it to myself. I could share this with colleagues. I could I could text it to friends, etc. Um, or I could save it somewhere else. But it's all all documented on my device. I can copy this and hopefully just be able to add this into that document with my ideas. Oops. Go over the top of that one, but there we go. So there's my voice memo idea. 
Now, again, I'm kind of showing you this as, as if I was planning a lesson, but that could be a voice memo from a meeting you've attended, from an interview that you've take, had with a student, uh, feedback on their learning that you could put together. Um, again, it just can speed up the process um, and you just have this easy way of just sharing that information um, with your learners at any given time or for whatever you might want to use voice memos for. So there we go, kind of a, a, a whistle stop tour of, of some of the many things that you can do on the device without really even covering so many of the other tools. Um, very briefly, if I look at the clock, for example, something which is very handy to all teachers is the ability to have a timer. And in this case, have a visual timer. So if I start this, we have that visual countdown playing on the screen. And again, I could ask um, Siri to do this for me. Set a timer for five minutes. Okay, five minutes and counting. So again, utilizing the power of Siri to be able to just instantly set things up. And, and this comes to a fall with me a lot of the time when I'm introducing things to my students um, and we talk about time, like how many times have I said, I'm gonna give you five minutes to do this. And then without actually having an understanding of the duration of time, um, I don't necessarily give students that full length of time. And actually, you're almost teaching them that time is not the length of time that you're telling them it is because you say, I'm going to give you five minutes and after two minutes, um, you do something different. Um, but just a question there from, from Kimberly. So your iPad doesn't let you have read of you. Um, it, on older devices, it looks slightly different. Um, so it depends on the, the model of device you have and what um, software you have. On the older devices, um, as far as I can remember, it's used, it just used to be three lines in the top corner here, rather than the two A's. Um, so that might be something. Otherwise, it might be a setting. So I will, I will take a look um, at that and let you know. Okay, so uh, whilst I was back on the home screen. So clock, uh, really, really useful. Other things within clock, the world clock. Um, there's so much on this page when you open this up. You might think it's just about finding out the time in other parts of the world, but actually, the more I look at this, the more I think of opportunities to use this for teaching. One, it's a fantastic map where I can search for certain locations. So let's tap on here, and I don't know where um, Addis Ababa is. So I tip on, tap on, tap on that, and it's going to tell me where it is. It's come up with the clock as being a black background. So there's a question to my students, why is it with a black background? And actually there's maybe a representation here that all of the ones with a white background are in this section and the ones with a black background are in this section. So actually not only is this telling me about the time and the location, but also night and day. So actually, as um, Sharon highlighted to us earlier, it's, it's early in the morning over there uh, because we've got this line which goes across and this is morning and this is dusk um, based obviously where I am. It will look different depending on where you are in the world. Um, and, and this is giving me an indication of where the sun is rising and falling. So actually there's a load of information that you can use in this um, for your students in the classroom. Other things, um, and this is possibly one of my favorites, in maps, there is a whole world of information in here. So I'm gonna jump to London and I'm hoping my Wi-Fi um, at the moment is not being drained by um, anyone else in the family. And I'm going to tap here on flyover and you'll notice straight away what flyover does is it loads London in an augmented reality, virtual reality view. So now I can explore London by moving my iPad around on the screen and I can move forward within that picture and scroll around as if I'm walking around and really start to explore a place that I might not actually get to go and visit very often or for some people, never go and visit. And you can do that with lots of the major places in the world. So think of major cities. Um, if I showed you that for Chepstow where I live, we live in a very two dimensional flat place that doesn't exist in, in 3D. We can also have a look at that in terms of satellite view. So again, this allows you to zoom in and in satellite view, you can look at it as if you are the bird's eye view down, but again, you can go to 3D, which takes you back into that familiar view that we just looked at where you can start to have a look around those places and, and tour places, look at scale and size and, uh, and, and you know, buildings that, uh, you know, have steeped in history and all of that. And then maybe compare that to another part of the world. So let's quickly fly over to New York. 
and do the same thing in New York. Again, I can go to flyover mode. Flyover, just it just allows you to have that um, visibility by just moving the iPad. So again, I'm just sort of searching around uh, New York and I can, again, zoom into certain areas and look around, start to look at scale of places. Um, but really, really nice way for students to explore things. Now, the reason I'm showing you New York is because I once did this with a group of uh, primary school teachers and I showed the teacher that if you if you walk around with this in flyover mode, it actually moves around when you move around. Um, and within about five minutes, he was running around pretending he was Spider-Man because he was moving around the screen and doing this. Um, and he'd come up with an idea, which which I will always remember thinking, if you gave this to young learners, obviously with a protective case, and asked them to explore New York as if they were Spider-Man, they could come up with the most creative stories by simply dragging down from the top corner, tapping on that screen record, turning a microphone on and capturing the whole thing as a video of a story of them exploring New York as if they were Spider-Man. So again, just creative ways to bring out the best um, in our learners. So all that is left to do now, um, and this is something to, I'm gonna challenge you to do um, in your own time, is to take the test. So within everything I've shown you today, Hopefully, we've explored the answers to many of the questions that come up. But also along that, we've also had the opportunity to just maybe think about the uses of those skills in the context of the classroom. So I really would love you to take the challenge. Um, have a go at downloading that journal that I've linked in the chat window. If you haven't got hold of that, if you just jump into the chat window, you can download it. And I'd love to hear from people um, about what you've experienced today or your thoughts. So if you're on Twitter, please do tweet um, us at, at South Wales RTC um, and use the Apple RTC or the Apple Teacher hashtag. Um, it would be great to hear some of the things that, that you've learned from the session and things that you um, would like to do going forward. Also just wanted to draw attention to future sessions. So thanks for joining in this one. We have a session which is specifically on using pages. Um, to support learner progression and we'll be using some of the skills that we learned today in a new context um, and then in the new year we will start off with looking at keynotes and how we can use that to model learning in science uh, we've got a session in February on use of formative assessment using video uh, then in March looking at podcasting with GarageBand and then rounding things up with structuring learning uh, using numbers and that's in April of next year. Now you can book onto any of those courses, they complement this one but they can also be used as standalone sessions um, and within each one again we'll go over many of the skills which will help, help you um, gain your badge before completing um, the whole Apple Teacher program. So hopefully that was of use, just conscious of the time and the fact that you've all uh, given up either your very early morning, Sharon, um, or your afternoon, evening. Um, but I will open it up now if there are any questions at all. Feel free to either drop them in the window um, or unmute yourself if you want to just ask um, out loud. Um, but just the final thing for me is to say thank you very much for, for joining in the session.